Welcome back, everybody. Let's get to this important topic, subway safety. It is a primary concern, especially as overnight train service returns. Yeah, more than half a dozen attacks since Friday, four of them taking place on Sunday morning during a four hour time span. New York City Transit Interim President Sarah Feinberg. She is joining us now with the steps that the MTA is taking to keep you, the commuter, safe. Good morning, to uh, Ms. Feinberg. Good to see you. Hey, good morning. Great to be with you. So, Sarah, by the way, big news here with the 24 hour subway service mm -hmm. back in action for the city of doesn't sleep, right? Great news there. But there is this primary concern of safety. Three more attacks in a four hour period yesterday. Are all of the attacks we've been seeing concentrated in one general area, right? Or is this a widespread city problem? And if it is, I know you want more cops that's assigned to trains. How many? Yeah, no, look, this is something that that it's it's not just in one spot or another. If it were, I think we, you know, it would be easier to address both from the NYPD side and from our side. So this is just a problem we're seeing throughout the system. Uh, but yes, I have I've pressured City Hall to, you know, give us additional resources. We certainly need a, a more significant uniformed presence. I feel like they've started to hear me on that. I've got, you know, feel like I'm getting really good cooperation from Commissioner Shea. We also need mental health resources help, right? We've been talking about that for a long time. Teams of mental health experts who can come into the system and really help those who are uh, experiencing a crisis. To help us understand the depth of this, you have said in the past, you know, the violence on the subway is really going to hurt New York City's reopening, right? And we've had five of the candidates for mayor support you in that and saying that there needs to be additional resources. Uh, so what are you hearing? I understand you said Commissioner Shea has been cooperative, but how how many more are you going to be able to get? Well, look, we started talking about the need for additional resources months ago. Following the horrific stabbings in February, we got an additional 644 officers. The NYPD says those officers are still in the system. I'm going to take them at their word and, and believe them when they say that. Then we got an additional 80. Then we got an additional 80. I've doubled the number of security contractors that are in the system. So. You know, pretty soon those numbers start to add up. So we're making progress on that front. <clears throat> that said, I do believe that, you know, that we need more, that we need to continue to, to make sure that we're tracking this problem very carefully. And the reason is this. We know that there's a tipping point where there's safety in numbers, right? When we get back to four and a half, five, five and a half million riders a day, you know, we're going to trade the safety issue for something else. Everyone's yeah. going to be packed like sardines and cars, right? But it's between now and then. It really matters. It's about, you know, how, how do we make sure that people come back so that we can get to that tipping point? So, you know, as the transit system comes back, so the city comes back and the economy comes back. That's why it's so important for us to partner together now to get us to that critical point. So what is the, I guess, argument, argument, or argumentative point here from City Hall? Commissioner Shea was here last week, said he couldn't commit to 600 additional officers, which is the number Pat Foy threw out last week, right? You said recently in an interview that you, quote, don't feel heard by the mayor. When's the last time you actually spoke to the mayor? And why do you feel like you're not being heard? Well, I have not touched the mayor in some time. We have a good, you know, we have good communications with his staff. Um, you know, needless to say, I would like to talk to the mayor and meet with him. Uh, but, you know, we have good communications with his staff, which is helpful. Again, I have a great relationship with Commissioner Shea. He's incredibly responsive. I think he's very familiar and understands the challenges we're facing, understands that it's really important for the people who are coming back to the city to use transit, to you know rejoin the system, to come back to their commutes with confidence, feeling safe and secure. And so that's really important. Look, I think from City Hall's perspective, they're probably just feeling generally strapped in terms of policing and generally strapped in terms of resources. What I'm saying is it's critically important to put those resources into the system. I know that there's an entire city competing, but it's really important for the city to come back for transit to come back so that the city can come back. So I'm going to my job is to advocate for my customers and advocate for my workforce. And I'm going to continue to do that. Yeah. You know, I do sometimes think City Hall would rather have a political fight. I don't want to have a political fight. This is this is just a difference of opinion. Let's just partner together and get there. We don't need to have a political or a partisan fight. Let's just get to a good solution. Sarah, I'm going to ask you about this because mayoral candidate Scott Stringer said, and I'm quoting here, the rush to send thousands of officers into subways with no plan makes no sense. So what is the plan that you want to take place here? And you did mention earlier that this is also a mental health issue as well. Yeah, I'm not sure what Mr. Stringer is, is 
talking about. Uh, there are lots of people here and at NYPD who do nothing but plan to make sure that you know our employees and our police forces work really well together. So first of all, the NYPD and the MTA police have been working together for 30, almost 30 years at this point. There's a very good partnership there. Uh, you know, on my part, we've got MTA police. I have security contractors in the system. I'm installing cameras as fast as I can. I work really closely with the NYPD on that. I share deployment information. I share information about where cameras are going up. So I, I'm not totally sure what, what Mr. Stringer is talking about, but I'd be happy to brief him on it if he was yeah. interested. Um, so there is a plan. And um, the one piece that's missing from the plan right now is additional policing and mental health resources. So if we can get those two pieces in place, I think we'll be in a pretty good place. Uh, we are simply out of time here, but real quick, disinfections, even though 24 hour service is back up and running, will still continue, correct? Absolutely, 100%, as will all of the other things we're doing to keep people safe from COVID, the, right. you know, the, the addressing aerosols and all that sort of Interim so president, uh, Sarah Feinberg, appreciate you always making the time for us this morning, and we will continue this conversation about safety because it is very important and part of the city's revival. Thank you. Good to see you, Sarah. Great to be with you. Thanks.